Good morning and welcome to Friendship United Methodist Church's online worship service. Today is Sunday, January the 24th, 2021, the third Sunday after the Epiphany. If you're joining with us by Facebook today, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Go ahead and log into your Facebook account so that you can participate in the chat during today's service. And if you're here with us by YouTube, welcome. We're glad you found us. Either way, go on over to the church's website, friendshipchurchnova.org, where you can access the resources for today's service, as well as sign the online attendance pad. And let us know if you have any prayer requests we can be praying for throughout the week. We'd also like to extend a special welcome to everyone joining with us by telephone today. Welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Well, I'd like to thank everyone who reached out to me this past week to let me know about your COVID-19 vaccination experience. So some of you have been able to receive the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Others have made appointments or are awaiting a phone call from the health department to confirm your appointment. I'd like to encourage everyone, as soon as you're eligible, to go ahead and sign up to receive the vaccine. You know, getting vaccinated is going to be key to our church's ability to return to in-person worship and other in-person church activities. So as soon as you're eligible, I encourage you to go ahead and sign up if you're able to receive the vaccine. And let me know how your experience goes. I'm very interested to hear about your vaccination experience. Call me, email me, let me know. Well, I'd like to announce that, believe it or not, we are less than a month away from Lent. So Lent begins on Wednesday, February the 17th, which is Ash Wednesday. And this Lenten season, I will be leading a study on C.S. Lewis's The Great Divorce. Now, this book has nothing to do with divorce. It's about heaven and hell. In it, C.S. Lewis offers a compelling vision of what heaven and hell might be like. And I think it will be the perfect book for this Lenten season. So if you're interested, go ahead and let me know. Call me, email me. I'd like to put together a list of those who are interested. Then once we get enough folks on the list, we'll go ahead and order the books from Cokesbury, and we'll figure out what time might work best for the study during the week. Um, and the study will take place over Zoom Remember, Zoom meetings are accessible by computer and telephone. Finally, I'd like to announce that the church council will meet this Wednesday, January the 27th at 7 o'clock p.m. via Zoom. Well, those are my announcements for this morning. This time, I'd like to invite Pastor Jim Ford for a few announcements. Jim? Good morning, friends. Just a couple of quick announcements for you today. So this is my last call for participants for our winter Bible study of the Gospel of Mark, which is the gospel assigned to the current lectionary cycle. So it seems like folks are interested in Tuesday or Wednesday. I just need to get that sorted out. But if you're interested in participating, please shoot me an email, and I'll have some more information about this study in the Friendship Happenings. Also, with our ACA food challenge, I just wanted to highlight some of the critical food items that we need this week. Um, ACA is asking for diapers and baby wipes, potatoes and onions, and please, those fresh food items, make sure those go in the white cooler outside. We also are looking for masa, corn flour, dish soap, and laundry detergent. Those are the critical items, but as always, any non-perishable food item is welcome. So thank you for your continued support, and uh, keep praying for the ministry of ACA. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Well, our Lord stands at the seashore, calling out to us, inviting us, come, follow me. We who follow Jesus gather this day online and by telephone to worship him. Let us now prepare our hearts and our minds to worship our Lord together.
Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of life's wild and restless sea. Day by day his sweet voice called and saying, Christian, follow me. As of old the apostles heard it by the Let us join together in the call to worship. Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress, I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Surely the lowborn are but a breath. The highborn are but a lie. If weighted on a balance, they are nothing. Together they are only a breath. Do not trust in extortion. Or put vain hope in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Though one thing God has spoken, two things I have heard. Power belongs to you, God. And with you, Lord, is unfailing love. And you reward everyone. According to what they have done. Let us pray. Give us grace, grace, O Lord, Lord, to to answer answer readily the call call of our our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ, Christ, and and proclaim to all people the good good news of his salvation. salvation that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now affirm our faith with a statement of faith of the Korean Methodist Church. We believe in the one God, Creator and sustainer of all things, Father of all nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the Savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the word of God, contained in the Old and New Testaments, as a sufficient rule both of faith and of practice. We believe in the Church, those who are united in the living Lord, for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God, as the divine divine will realized realized in human society and in the the family family of God, God, where where we are are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Oh, no. 
I'd like to invite the children and all who are feeling young at heart to come close for our moment with children. When I was a little boy, many times during the spring and the summer, uh, my brother Mark would come home and he would take me fishing with him. He had this old beat up brown bass boat that sat on the side of our house. And uh, he sometimes would take me down to the Potomac River, down to Pohick Bay, uh, sometimes Lake Anna. And he, just the two of us, we would go fishing together. And my brother loved fishing. He had all kinds of tackle boxes with a million lures. I mean, those tackle boxes where you open them up and they raise up like 10 decks. And they have all these different cool, colorful lures. And of course, there were you know the, the bloody worms to go with all that plastic gear. Um, so Mark would take me out on the boat, and he would uh, teach me how to put the bait on the hook he would teach me how to hold the rod and how to flip it back and cast the rod and then to sit and to wait. And you know when you're a kid, you don't really enjoy all that waiting business. You just want to reel it in, but he taught me how to wait. Well, all this talk about fishing, today in our gospel story from the Gospel of Mark, we hear about Jesus walking along the Sea of Galilee, and he comes across Simon and his brother, Andrew. And they are casting their nets, and Jesus calls to them and says, follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. Fishers of people, interesting. Well, they immediately drop their nets and follow Jesus. And Jesus travels along, and he comes across another pair of brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother, John. And they're mending their nets. You know, it's a different kind of fishing than I was talking about with the rod and the lures and all the plastic gear. They're mending their nets because they cast out nets over the side of the boat and haul in the fish. And Jesus says to these brothers, James and John, Come and follow me. And again, we're told that they drop their nets and they follow Jesus. And presumably, he's going to make them fishers of people as well. Well, all this talk about fishing for people, it may sound strange, young ones, but what Jesus is trying to tell us is that we have another calling. In all the things we love to do, Jesus has another calling for us. He is calling us to become fishers like him. And we have, as I've said several uh, weeks now, we have good news to share. And sometimes that requires going out. Maybe it requires casting your rod. Maybe it requires casting your net. Whatever that looks like for you, that's an action. That's something that we have to do. So following Jesus isn't always easy. It requires something of us. But if we believe this good news that we have, this is a joyful task. Don't be afraid. We're all in this together. So you and me and everyone here this morning in our virtual church, we are called to fish for people. So in this time of isolation where we're at home and stuck there and not seeing many people, how can we fish for people? Can we make a phone call? Can we send a card? Can we encourage somebody at school over um, Blackboard or on Zoom or whatever you're using? How can you fish for people? Think about it. So now I invite you to pray, and all God's children are welcome to pray. Holy God, Holy God you, have called us you have called us to fish, to, fish 
to fish for people. Wherever we are, help us to go fishing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we've come to the time in our worship service where we have an opportunity to pray together. If you're joining with us by Facebook, we invite you to enter in your prayer requests in the chat. That way, other folks on Facebook can be praying for those requests as we all pray together. As always, if you go to the church's website, there at the online attendance pad is a box where you can enter in your prayer requests, and we can be praying for those requests throughout the week. Let us now come to God in a time of prayer together. Faithful and loving God, for the gift of this new day, we give you thanks. Refresh us with your divine grace. Enable us to look forward with hope and anticipation of what we will accomplish together for your kingdom today. We give you thanks that we're able to gather online and by telephone to worship you. And we are grateful for our brothers and sisters in Christ with whom you unite us by your Holy Spirit today. We give you thanks for saving us through Jesus Christ. Help us to live each and every day as those who are called by Christ to follow him. And as we do, we ask that you would bless us, heal us, challenge us, and correct us, and call us to repentance, all that we may be made more holy, that our capacity to love would grow, and that the light of Christ would shine through us. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that we would join Christ in proclaiming the good news of your kingdom and bringing new Christians into the fold as they too say yes to the call of Christ and discover the joy of being fully alive in him. We pray for our nation today. We pray for our nation's newly inaugurated leaders. We pray for your Holy Spirit to guide them in their decision-making and in their working together for the benefit of all. Lord, shine your rays of hope and healing upon our nation. We pray for the vaccine rollout. We pray for all who suffer from coronavirus this day and we pray for an end to the coronavirus pandemic. We pray for an extra measure of your grace for all who are lonely, tired, mourning, frustrated, hopeless, fearful, and struggling. Lift them up and grant them your faith, hope, and love, and help us to lift each other up in faith, hope, and love. Unite us as the body of Christ, your church, and grant us perseverance. Bless our congregation, our ministries, and our schools, O Lord, we pray. And now, O Lord, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we join together in praying the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, our scripture lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter, verses 14 through 20. If you go to the church's website, there you will find a link to Bible Gateway where you can access today's scripture lesson and follow along as we read it together. Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. Will you hear these words of scripture? After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Come, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Fill us, move through us, speak to us the word you would have us hear this day. In Jesus' holy and mighty name we pray. Amen. Here in today's scripture lesson, we see the beginning of Jesus's ministry and the beginning of his disciples' ministry too. As Jesus gathers disciples to himself, we see the proto-church, the first gathered community of disciples. Now Jesus begins his ministry with these words, the time has come, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. What so few people recognized at the time was that the kingdom of God was near because Jesus was near. He's inviting others to join him in his kingdom. How can we join Jesus in his kingdom? Well, as Jesus announces, it begins with repentance, recognizing that none of us are worthy of his kingdom, and yet we're invited anyway, not by our own merits, but by the grace of God. But we can only be open to Jesus's good news if our hearts are repentant. It's the opposite of pride. Jesus is opening his kingdom to us, but he requires repentance on our part so that he can work on us, grow us in love, build our character, make us more like himself, shape us into citizens of his kingdom. Speaking on the topic of virtue, C.S. Lewis writes in Mere Christianity, quote, The point is not that God will refuse you admission to his eternal world if you have not got certain qualities of character. The point is that if people have not got at least the beginnings of those qualities inside them, then no possible external conditions could make a heaven for them, that is, could make them happy with the deep, strong, unshakable kind of happiness God intends for us, end quote. So we see Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee, and he calls his first disciples. He calls Peter and his brother Andrew. Of course, they do not know it at the time, but Peter and Andrew will follow Christ faithfully all the way to their own crucifixions. And Jesus calls James and John the sons of Zebedee. And as we'll see later in the scriptures, Jesus used to call them Boanerges because they had quite a temper. But despite their temper, Jesus calls them to follow him anyway. He can work on them. Peter, Andrew, James, and John leave their nets behind to follow Jesus, nets used to catch fish for day-to-day -day bodily sustenance. They are leaving this behind so that they may join Jesus in a different kind of fishing, one with eternal consequences, fishing for people, bringing them into the boat, which is Jesus's church. So these disciples know little of what Jesus is getting them into, let alone that they will become apostles of the church. And yet they have faith. They hear his voice, and they choose to accept his invitation to follow him. We're going to revisit Jesus at the seashore following the events of Good Friday and Easter. After Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection, the disciples return to their lives as fishermen, and the resurrected Jesus will meet them again on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, calling out to them, throw your nets to the right side of the boat. And when they do, the disciples catch so many fish that they can barely lift the net out of the water. Jesus is showing them that by his power, the apostles will build his church and his church will grow exponentially, like a mustard seed that be 
begins as a tiny kernel and grows up into a tree. In the midst of this pandemic lockdown, it might be hard to know how we can respond to Jesus's call and join him in his fishing expedition. It's a time when our usual avenues of connection and outreach are either significantly altered or closed in the interest of public health. But you know what? Jesus is still building his church. So how can we answer his call and join him in being fishers of people? Well, as we discussed before, it begins with repentance. This is something we can certainly do in our homes, right? With the Holy Spirit's guidance, we can identify the things in our lives that are getting in the way of following Jesus more fully. What nets must we leave behind in the boat, like Peter, Andrew, James, and John did, in order to follow Jesus? You know, even though we're locked inside, there are so many things that can distract us. So one simple and yet profound, even life-changing act of repentance could be to substitute time in front of the TV with time in front of the Bible, time in prayer, getting the day off to a good start. You know, something the Lord showed me recently, I was listening to and reading news about all the political squabbling, and it was really getting me down. It was troubling my spirit, and I finally realized why. Here I am feeding myself with news that just highlights over and over again the fallen nature of humanity. It's the same as it's always been, and that won't change. So I switched over to some more nourishing and inspiring content about the one who redeems our fallen nature. Scripture, sermons, Christian teaching, the lives of the saints, let us spend our time consuming that which builds up our faith instead of that which burdens our spirit. So that's a way Christ called me to repentance recently. How about you? And I'd like to share something with you. So someone in the congregation gave me this beautiful calendar from St. Catherine Greek Orthodox Church and Falls Church. And here in the calendar, we see icons of the saints and icons depicting Jesus's life. Here's the Annunciation. Here's Jesus on Palm Sunday. These icons are a window into heaven. So if you need some encouragement in faith, I would encourage you to gaze upon an icon, to meditate on the icon. If you'd like a copy of this calendar, just let me know and I'll see what I can do. Another way we can respond to Jesus' call while in lockdown is by participating in the ministries of the church. And we can still do this by internet and telephone. We have our online worship on Sundays. We have a couple of Bible studies, children's programs, women's ministry. Folks, make sure you're staying connected to the church. As we've discovered, by moving our ministries online due to the pandemic, we're actually able to reach more people. Folks living far away can now worship with us and participate in our ministries. And that's a wonderful thing. We're the fish that other disciples caught, and Jesus now empowers us to be fishers of people, sharing the good news with others and bringing them into the boat, the church. Furthermore, stay connected to each other. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. This pandemic, more than anything, has affirmed the lines of that famous hymn, the church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place, the church is a people. So stay connected with each other. If you're feeling depressed or lonely or fearful or you've got cabin fever, I guarantee you some of your brothers and sisters in Christ are experiencing the exact same thing. Call them up and talk about it. It will be encouraging. It will lift your spirits. Jesus will be there with you. Remember, wherever two or more are gathered in his name, there he is among them. So call someone from the church this week and just talk. There's no agenda. Call me and tell me about your vaccines. I spoke with some of y'all this past week. You're getting signed up for your vaccines. That's great news. Finally, I'll say this. Stay connected with God. We're still in the first month of the new year. Now, it's it's a good time to ask yourself, how's my prayer life? Am I keeping that line of communication open? Talk with God every day. Stay connected with God. 
Folks, these are challenging times. Like I was talking about last Sunday, there are all sorts of things competing for our attention, pulling us this way and that way. We've got to develop that spiritual discernment to know what is from God and what is from somewhere else. So spend time in prayer every day. Strengthen your relationship with God, and He will strengthen your spiritual discernment. Our district superintendent reminds the clergy of the Arlington District every week, stay calm, stay connected, stay on mission. And that is what we will do. Jesus invites us to follow him each day, and when we do, he builds his church through us. He can still build up his church even in a pandemic, and we're seeing him do just that. It's an amazing thing. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Brothers and sisters, Jesus stands at the seashore, calling each of us by name. Answer his invitation and follow him. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. <laughs>